so. So that's that, that's why <laughs> I like her. Could you ever have predicted back when you were on Dallas, like what, I mean, reality TV is such a, it's a real thing and it's been here for a while. I mean, speaking of housewives, like, are you ever just shocked? I mean, just, I, I grew up in a time when there was no reality TV. It's such a big thing these days. Well, I always said Sue Ellen was the original desperate housewife. And I have no interest. I think it's wonderful. They're gorgeous women, blah, blah, blah. And I applaud them for doing what they're doing. But I have no interest. I don't see, watch that kind of, um, those reality shows. I just don't. Do you think Sue Ellen would get along with Hillary Michaels? <laughs> They should have lunch and discuss. Then we'll get back to you. <laughs> Two successful business women. Talk to me about the reboot with Cynthia Sidre. It was so great on TNT. Like, where did you first hear about that? Like, was it Cynthia? Was it like an agent or a manager? Or was it someone like Larry calling and saying like, hey, guess what? No. Uh, two years prior to that, uh, we, Larry Patrick and I got a random phone call. Would you be interested in doing a reboot? And we all said, sure. You know, we would get to work together after 20 years. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, it, that was a dream. So we called each other and said, did you get that call? Did you get that call? So we all said, yes. And then the script was not good. So we didn't want to come back and have it be like a dreaded failure. That would not be good. So um, we said, mm. so then we never heard from them for two years. Not another phone call, nothing. We were like, well, it, it was kind of excitement, a little bit of excitement. Anyway, so what happened was um, uh, two years later, we got a call, another call, and we were kind of skeptical, like, are you messing with us again? And then we got a script. And for me, I mean, I don't think the guys knew this, but for me on the title of the script was uh, created by or written by Cynthia Cidre, a woman. I was already, I already liked it. I didn't even open it. I was like, oh my God, a woman, yes, make this happen. So I read it. It was more, more about the guys in the beginning and I didn't care. I thought this would be good. Bring in the young kids and this and that and, and give it young energy. But I think they made such a good decision, but they had to have us. They had to have the oldies, the goodies in there because we were the, we were the foundation. And I don't think they could have just had the, the kids, even though they're wonderful. I love them to pieces, all of them still. Um, but I think it was wise. They needed uh, the grounding of the older ones. And, and um, I think they did a great job. Cynthia did a fabulous job of pulling it all together. And uh, so one night we had dinner, uh, the three of us, and uh, Mike Robin and Cynthia Cedre. And I think we, I mean, because Larry is so funny, um, I think we kind of, they were kind of stunned like, this is J.R., Sue Ellen, and Bobby. And they were kind of like, and, you know, the boys were throwing dinner rolls across the table and one ended up on somebody else's table in the restaurant. I mean, it was chaos. And so, but they had chosen us. They had said, okay, we want the three of you to be in the new reboot. And we were blessed and thankful and had so much gratitude. So we got to work together again, 20 years later. Wow. Beautiful. Did you have, you know, Sue Ellen ran for governor, like she was this powerful businesswoman, like how much input did you have in Sue Ellen, like the, the second time around and where the character well, was? It was actually, that was my idea to run for governor. Cause I thought she knows all the guys, all who the JR business guys, she knows all his tricks. She knows all his lying and terrible business dealings, but she knows everybody. So I thought this time around, wouldn't it be cool if she became governor of Texas? Why not? And then JR would have to <clears throat> deal with Sue Ellen Ewing. <laughs> I thought this is great. So I went to Cynthia and 
she at first she was reluctant like oh god maybe because it, you know it wasn't in the script and so i thought okay so i told her i said this is my idea i think it would be great because it would be a power to power it would be jr and sue ellen but she would be governor yes so anyway, we started the campaign and it was on a roll and everything. And then one day she came to me and she said, you have to lose. And I said, why? Why do I have to lose? She said, because the capital is in Austin. This is called Dallas. We need to be in the city of Dallas and we can't afford to fly you back and forth. I mean, literally, they did, wouldn't have, but wouldn't have, but it, it needed to be more Dallas concentrated. I should have run for mayor or something, but anyway, it's my idea to be governor of Texas. So then I had to I had to lose. So I said, well, if I have to lose, make it quick, make it as painless as possible, because I don't want to just kind of hover here. So she was great. So I lost, and that was it. Next, it was very funny. So we laughed a lot about. It. At least I got to, to run. It was a great story arc. What about, you know, we saw, you know, obviously in the show, the death of JR, in that is when you started, you picked up a bottle. I mean, was that because of, like, was there a discussion in the reboot of, like, will Sue Ellen drink? Were you strongly opposed to her drinking again? And was this, like, a conscious decision where you weighed in of, like, you know what, this is actually a time where she should drink? Yeah, I asked that she not. I said, we've been there, done that. Ad nauseum. I, no. I said, so please, uh, please don't let her drink. So I thought it was absolutely appropriate when JR died, slash Larry Hagman died, that she, you know, I've talked to a lot of alcoholics and they, I said, would you, would you drink if this happened? If you're husband slash ex-husband, whatever, uh, would you would you take a drink? And they said, yes. And uh, most of them, most of them. Some said no, but some said yes. And Cynthia was so, so conscious of the fact how, of how delicate it would be. And I thought, yep, that would be, that would be the honorable thing, the respectful thing to do. As because that was she went down again. This was like mentally down, and I thought, okay, if she were to drink, that would be the time. So uh, I agreed to that. Uh, it was it was a tough scene uh, because there was nobody, just me in that scene and drinking, and well, it was a tough one. Yeah, it was hard, but I felt it was right. Yeah, it made sense to me. Was it like at least cathartic, you know, of all the times, like if you're going to lose, you know, one of your best friends, like that you guys were actually all together, you know, working together. It was almost like meant to be, so to speak, if it ever was going to happen. Did you have that type of in the moment reaction? Yeah, yeah. Everybody felt it, you know, that when I was standing at the casket, when we did that scene, uh, I mean, it, it affected everybody, the whole cast. It was a tough one. It was just handled so well, so true to Dallas. I think the whole thing about the reboot, like it's just the whole thing. It felt so true to the original. I mean, I don't know how Cynthia got it. So I think having the three of you there certainly did help, but just the kids were great. The whole thing was just- Kids were great. I Love know- this. Do you think, I mean, I know TNT, I know all the politics, there was new management and came in. Like, do you think it was partly like Larry's passing or was it just more the whole TNT and all like the new regime didn't really believe in the show? Because it was brilliant. I think they used Larry's death as an excuse. And it was an 